Hey gang, Vintage Composer here with you for a decent size PC. This one of George Brett of the Kansas City Royals, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1999 with one of the highest percentages in history. He was a three-time batting champion, member of the 3000 Hit Club, won the American League MVP in 1980, 13-time All-Star, and one of the greatest, if not the greatest Royal of all time wearing number five in honor of another great third baseman in Brooks Robinson. So this is the modest collection that I have begun and continue to collect through the years of Mr. Brett. And we'll start with something easy. And that's the Royals team cards that were issued during the time he was an active player and the time that Tops were printing these little subsets from 1975 all the way through to 1981, featuring the entire team and highlighting the managers during that stretch, Jack McKeon, Whitey Herzog, and Jim Fry. George Brett's rookie is 1975, of course. We're starting here with 1981, when Tops had some competition with Fleer and Donruss all through the 80s and 90s, and top card is his 1981 Tops base set, with a nice bright patch on his left sleeve and also showcasing he was an all-star the year before. Batting leader's card, as he flirted with hitting 400 in 1980, he finished at 390. And this card that starts the set is with Bill Buckner of the Cubs, who was the National League batting champion. And next to that is a 1981 Topps scratch-off. They were games uh, you scratched off for prizes, and they came in groups of three players each, and George and other players were combined with four different combination of perforated panels. In the middle is George Brett's 1981 Donruss and Donruss MVP card, and then at best hitters alongside seven-time batting champion Rod Carew, who won the American League MVP in 1977, in which he also flirted with a very, very high uh, batting average. His 81 Fleer uh, showcasing he was MVP, and then another one showing his 390 average. At the bottom, next to his 81 Tops All-Star Foil sticker. And on the back, three more of George's stickers from the 1981 set. The first one with Ben Ogilvy of the Brewers. And then two other ones, part of the album that you can peel stickers off and place inside the album, which I believe were organized by team. Here we have some cards from 1982. At the top, his Tops Bass in Action and All-Star card. In the middle is 82 Donruss, Donruss Diamond Kings, and 82 Fleer. And at the bottom, his Topps All-Star sticker, Topps Base sticker, and his 1982 Drake's Big Hitters, which were a 33-card set. And I believe they also came as part of a box set that you could send away through an ordering slip. Topps put out a box set in conjunction with Kmart stores for their 20th anniversary, and George Brett's 1980 card is a part of that and his Kellogg's 3D Superstars card, a set of 64 cards, some of which were available in marked boxes of Kellogg's cereals, and the sets were available from 1970 all the way to 1983, generally about 60 cards in each, and you can see his image looks like it's kind of broken away from the background to give it a 3D look. 1983 Tops and Tops All-Star at the top next to the 83 Opeachy, exact same picture, a different back, and it's the Canadian version. His 83 Fleer, Tops Sendaway Glossy, and Donruss in the middle, and then his 83 3D Superstars and Tops Sticker. Here's his 1984 Tops and All-Star and Sendaway Glossy, and then his Fleer Base and Superstar Special with Gaylord Perry poking fun at the pine tar incident. You may remember the video I put up a few weeks ago celebrating the anniversary of that game at Yankee Stadium and Gaylord Perry's part in that. And his 1984 Topps Ralston Purina card. 1984 Donruss top sticker and Topps All-Star sticker are at the bottom. And here's his 1984 Milton Bradley Championship game card. A 30 card set in which you could play a game with others based on the rules on the back of each card. And we follow the same pattern in 1985 with his Topps Base All-Star and Rack Pack All-Star. 85 Donruss and two 85 Donruss Highlights. 
shoving him winning Player of the Month in May and Player of the Month in July in the American League. His top sticker, All-Star sticker, and Fleer Limited Edition uh, box set that had 33 players in it. And because I have just 10 cards in 1985, we turn the sheet to show his base card from 1985 Fleer. In 1986, Topps gave us his regular issue and All-Star as part of their set and his mini or league leaders card. The middle row is all Fleer. It's his base card, his mini, and a box bottom, which you can find in a panel of four players on the bottom of wax boxes. And a superstar special with fellow third baseman Wade Boggs, pretty good hitter in his own right with five batting titles and over 3,000 hits himself. It's entitled Boggs and Hero. His 1986 Donruss next to that, and his 1986 Donruss highlights card commemorating him being the all-time hit leader in Royals history. Fleer released more than just base cards of George Brett in 1986. At the top, the insert Fleer All-Star Team, randomly packed in wax packs, 86 star sticker, which was a mainstay for a few years in the late 80s, a few box sets, league leaders, sluggers versus pitchers, otherwise known as baseball's best, and limited edition. Topps also had a box set called Superstar in the yellow, his stickers, base, and all-star with foil. And then the Quaker Chewy Granola Bars. This was a 33-card set Tops made in conjunction with Quaker, known for their granola bars as well as their oatmeal. And the top row here shows his 86 Top Send in Glossy, his 1986 Wax Box Bottom, and 1986 Sports Flicks. Yes, the first card here is 1987 Tops, but it's not his regular base card. It's his regular Tiffany card. There were about 5,000 limited edition sets made, which had an extra special gloss on them. It came with a, a thicker, stiffer stock. Topps made sets like this through the mid-80s into the early 90s, and they're all highly sought after. The card in the middle on the top row is his 1987 base, and then his 87 league leaders or minis. It's all Don Russ in the middle, 87 opening day his 87 base and 87 Diamond Kings. And at the bottom, 87 Fleer, Fleer Mini, and Wax Box Bottom. Tops came back to celebrate Kmart's 25th anniversary in 1987 with a special collector's edition set of 44 cards. 87 Sports Flicks and Fleer Limited Edition round out the top. Some more 87 box sets with Sluggers vs. Pitchers and Record Setters. His 87 Tops Royals Leaders along with second baseman Frank White. 87 top send in glossy, classic baseball, and top sticker are at the bottom. And the lone card on this page is his 87 tops KB Superstars of Baseball, another 33 card box set. Now, card company has started really producing cards in 1988. We'll try to breeze through these 1988 tops, top send in glossy, and score, showing the patch on his right sleeve in honor of former manager Dick Hauser. 1988 Fleer, Donruss, and Donruss Opening Day. And then some more box set goodies with Fleer Baseball All-Stars, Topps Kmart Memorable Moments, and Fleer Baseball's Hottest Stars. 1988 Top Sticker, Superstar Sticker Back, Classic Baseball, and Sports Flicks. He was a veteran by 1989, and most of the card companies gave him some pretty good-looking cards. 1989 Topps. Top Sticker and Topps Wax Box Bottom, 89 Fleer, Topps Big and Bowman, and at the bottom, Upper Deck, Base, Team Checklist, and Fleer Superstars. 89 Score, Donruss Base, Donruss All-Star, Donruss MVP Insert, Topps UK, Classic Baseball, Topps Glossy Send-In, Sports Flicks, and 89 Topps Mini. By 1990, all the superstars and veterans of the game had even more cards and collectibles made, and it's actually tough to keep track of, of everything that's out there, but we'll go through the few that I have of the early 90s. 1990 Tops, Fleer, and Players of the Decade, highlighting his 1980 season. The Donruss Diamond Kings on the second row is part of a 55-card set called the Learning Series, which were given to middle school students for educational purposes. 1990 Donruss base and upper deck base and then 1990 score 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 masters which is a bit of a knockoff of the diamond king subsets 
1990 Collectibooks, which was a 36 card set released in three different colored boxes in which you can open up as a pamphlet and it had other pictures and stats and quotes of certain players. In 1990, George became the first player to win a batting title in three different decades and the 1991 Topps Record Breaker mentions this. There's his base card next to it in the 91 upper deck. In the middle, 91 score, Fleer, and Studio. 1991 Donruss Series 1 base, Series 2 MVP insert, and Series 2 highlights. Another highlight from score, his 91 score franchise, which were a 26 card run in the base set, showing one player from each team that were dubbed the franchise, all black and white photos. 91 score Cooperstown insert, and 91 Stadium Club. He got a good tan just before his 1992 Topps card. Next to that, Fleer and Donruss. In the middle is Upper Deck, Leaf, and Score. In 1993, a lot of card companies went shiny. And next to his 93 Upper Deck Base is Upper Deck Diamond Gallery, a 38 card box set. An SP insert from Upper Deck. George Brett does it on one side and Robin Young getting his 3000th hit on the other. The two eclipsed the magic mark within two weeks of each other at the end of the 92 season. 93 Upper Deck special card with new teammates Wally Joyner and Greg Jeffries making the Royal Family. His Upper Deck Then and Now insert and Stadium Club. And at the bottom, 93 Tops, Fleer, and Fleer Golden Moments insert. First card here is 93 Score Base, 93 Jimmy Dean which was a 28 card set and Duracell Power Players, a 24 card box set. 93 Upper Deck, Walter Ios collection, with a great shot of him waiting pensively on deck as the sun sets. Uh, 93 Studio and 93 Pinnacle Tribute insert. I'm not really sure when this picture was taken. He got his 3000th hit in Anaheim, so maybe one of the first games back and they flash the magic number on the scoreboard behind him. Some of the last cards of George Brett during his playing days, his last Topps card, 1994, 94 Collector's Choice and Donruss Career Salute, and then his 94 Fleer. And at the bottom will be 95 SP and 99 Upper Deck Legends. 2000 Fleer Greats of the Game, 2001 Topps Archives, showing his first card and his last card in the Topps run. Uh, 2001 Fleer Showcase, Tops American Pie, American Sluggers insert, another Fleer Greats of the Game, Donruss Champions from 2003, 2003 Donruss Team Heroes, and 2003 Tops Gallery. Here we have 2004 SP Legendary Cuts, Donruss Leather and Lumber, 2008 Donruss Threads, 2012 Topps Archives, showing an alternate version of what a 1980 Topps card would look like. 2013 Topps Gypsy Queen. The Mini is 2013 Topps Update in the style of 1971. 2013 Panini Cooperstown Museum Pieces, showing a pinback button that was produced in 1980, hoping that George would hit 400. 2013 Topps Archive in the style of 1985 Topps. 2014 Topps Gypsy Queen, 2014 Donruss, Topps Update Fond Farewell insert, 2015 Topps Stadium Club, interesting story about that card is the picture in which this painting was derived was the inspiration for the song Royals that was released a few years ago by Lord. And the final card, 2018 Panini Diamond King Portraits. Couple more oddball items, some Fleer stickers that were inserted one per wax pack from 1988 and 1991. And then Magic Motion trivia cards from Score that were released in the late 80s. The first one called A Date to Remember from 1989 and the second The MVPs from 1990. Donruss had its own series of larger size cards called Action All-Stars that were released from 1983 until 1987. They measured three and a half by five inches. 1983 up top, here's 84 and 85. This other one is from 1984, it is called Donruss Champions 
It was a separate oddball 60 card set uh, featuring past and present players. Here's his 86 and 87 Donruss, as well as an 86 Donruss pop-up, which was a perforated picture you could separate from the background and stand up in a 3D display. In 1980 and 81, Topps released a 60 card set called Superstar Photos. They measured five by seven inches. The card on the bottom is his 1980 version, which came in both white and gray backs. And up top is his 1984 Topps Super. Here's his Super from 85 and 86. All cards looked exactly like their base counterparts. A couple of wax box bottom panels from 1990 and 91, still intact with the other three players. From 1990, it comes with Wade Boggs, Andre Dawson, and Daryl Evans. And in 91, it's Brett Blylevin, Brett Butler, and Andre Dawson. The numbering on the back was actually alphabetical, and the players were consecutively run alphabetically by their last name. And finally at the bottom, 1987 Diamond King Super. So that's the couple hundred or so pieces of George Brett cards and memorabilia I have here. Like the players in my other PC, I'm sure there's other little oddball stuff hanging out in other pockets of my universe. And if I should come across them, I'll be happy to share with all of you. Thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you soon with more videos on the way.